Good evening, everyone. Welcome along to my final year project presentation. Um, in case you don't know, it is the design of the uprights for a Formula student car, and my name is Karen Mackay. So first, I'm just going to do a brief introduction into unsprung mass. So unsprung mass is a sub-assembly of the car that consists of hubs, hub bearings, brake disc, the wheel, the tyre, and the uprights. So the upright is one of the main structural components used to connect the wheel to the suspension assembly. So the whole reason for this project is that UG Racing has made the design decision to change from 13 inch to 10 inch wheels for this year. The main reason for this is it will reduce the centre of gravity of the car and it's hoped it will help contribute to the lightest car that UG Racing have ever made. So as my project is mechanical design based, the foundation of my design work is in the component design specification. So this is a large document and a live document that contains all the requirements that the component needs to meet in order to be a successful design. So the component design specification is divided up into main subheadings. I'm only going to go through a couple of these because it's quite a long document by this point. So one of the subheadings is the performance of the component. So this considers the loading that it will experience during racing. This is everything from bump to brake, acceleration and braking. A second subsection of the CDS is the local constraints of the component. As the upright is a main mounting point for the suspension system, there's a lot of interfacing components. So these include the hub bearings, which are pressed into the bearing centre, as well as the top and bottom AR mounts, steering arm for the front uprights and a toe arm for the rear uprights. A third section of the component design specification is the environment that the upright experiences during its lifetime. So it's exposed to all of the elements that the wheels and tyres are exposed to during a race, including grip from the track. And it does experience some heat from the brake disc within the sub-assembly. So a benchmark for the design, without taking you through the whole component design specification, is the UGR17 upright design you can see at the top of the screen. So these were CNC mills on a three-axis machine by one of our sponsors in 2017 called Tanlin. And to give you an idea of the mass of the components, the rear upright weighed 1.123 kilograms and the front upright weighed 0.99 kilograms. Both UGR17 design and this year design will provide adjustable camber through the use of shims on the top A-arm mount. So camber is the angle between the tyre centre line and a vertical line. And negative camber is used to optimise the contact patch of a tyre during cornering. So before I started my own designs for UGR19, I conducted some design research and almost a literature review into existing designs, both in Formula Student and the wider <coughs> motorsport community. So on the left hand side, you can see a design often referred to as a spider web design. This is CNC milled, and you can see where it got the name from. So this design is ideal for suspension points that are a large distance from the wheel center and the bearing center as it allows a larger volume of the wheel to be occupied by the upright. However, with the spider web design, it can still have a high stiffness to weight ratio depending on the web pattern. The image in the middle is from the University of Utah. It demonstrates a welded upright design. It's extremely popular in newer teams in Formula Student. The reason to go for a manufacturing method such as welding is it has a reduced manufacturing time and welding facilities are much more widely available than the use of CNC milling machines. There is a reduced geometric accuracy of the part due to heat distortion, so sometimes parts can require post-welding post heat treatment to minimise this. Also, simulating welds is a notoriously difficult thing to do with a large number of assumptions needing to be made. Therefore, most teams who use a welded design validate it through the use of physical testing and destructive testing. So the third, final and probably most exciting image on that screen is an upright that was manufactured using an additive manufacturing method. So this is similar to 3D printing but it can be used for metals such as titanium. So this results in a very complex but lightweight design 
and it's a highly <coughs> simulation driven design process. So iterative topology optimization is used by inputting the loading that the part will experience and the software removes excess material from the part. So for my project, manufacturing was one of the largest constraints with Tanlin confirmed once again as the manufacturer of the uprights at the start of November. As well as providing the use of their three axis CNC milling machines, Tanlin are also going to provide the material for my project. So they were going to provide four billets of 6082T6 aluminium. Based on my initial component design specification, I created some CAD, which you can see on the screen. This was intentionally over engineered and sort of a first step in the design process, and it weighed in at 0.9 kilograms, so it was quite a beefy design. One of the most controversial parts of my upright design was the steering or toe arm design, and it involved quite a lot of pros and cons. So in 2017, the top image, we use a bolt-on steering and toe arm clevis, and through discussions with the manufacturer, there were a range of reasons for this. So it involves less machining time for the sponsor as there a smaller billet could be purchased with a smaller volume of material required to be removed for the design. As the material was bought by ourselves in 2017, it did reduce material costs, which <coughs> is always a bonus for a team running a tight budget. The bottom picture shows an initial 2019 integrated steering and toe arm design. So many reasons for going for this include it reduces the part count in the unsprung mass assembly. Even on a visual inspection, you can see there's a lower volume of material required around the part. So therefore, it's a lighter weight option. It also removes stress razors, such as the holes required to bolt on the actual components to the upright. It will also make the assembly process easier once we get the parts delivered to us. So after an iterative design process and continually reviewing the design against the component <laughs> design specification, you can see my final version of the CAD that was sent to Tanlin for manufacture. So the rear left upright on the left hand side, the CAD weighs in at 0.688 kilograms and when compared to UGR 17, that was a weight saving of 0.45 kilograms. So the front left upright, which is on the right hand side, just to confuse you, it weighs in at 0.558 kilograms and compared to 2017 has a weight saving of 0.432 kilograms. So you can see for this full set of two front and two rear uprights, it's a total weight saving of 0.177 kilograms. It's a 42% reduction of material weight compared to 2017. That's not including the extra weight for the bolt <coughs> mechanism to attach the clevises. So once my design was finalized in CAD, I moved into the design analysis and detailed design stage of the project. To calculate the forces that both front and rear uprights experience during racing, I carried out some hand calculations. Data was provided both by suspension and brake subsystem designs, and I used some of these figures in my hand calc. So I carried out calculations for bump, and for the purpose of this project, bump was simulated as three and a half times the static load on one wheel, acting directly upwards at the center of the tire. Then using beam calculations, I was able to translate the load into a force on both the inner and the outer bearings. Using the brake calculation spreadsheet, I was able to calculate the force that the, toe, that the caliper might experience. And all of these hand calculated loads were put into Abacus to carry out finite element analysis simulations. So the worst case scenario that an upright will experience is if it simultaneously experiences cornering, braking and bump all at the same time. So that's when the outer wheels of the car experience the most force. So all of these forces calculated by hand calculations were input into Abacus and I placed a boundary condition on the top and bottom eight arm mics. You can see the resulting contour plot on the right hand side. I know it is a wee bit small, I do apologize. Um, but there was a good factor of safety to come out from both front and rear simulations. 
So the fronts have a factor of safety of 1.8 and the rears have a factor of safety of 1.2. Doesn't sound too high to start with, but that factor of safety is about the boundary condition that I place on the eight arm mount. So the highest force actually experienced on the toe and steering arm has a factor of safety of 1.3, 1.7 for the rears and a factor of safety of three for the front. As well as FAA and carried out a design failure mode effect analysis, it was essentially a large spreadsheet where I considered every failure mode of the component. So I considered the fracture of every suspension mounting point and what would happen if there was a driver in the car at that time. So the highest risk priority number that was highlighted in my spreadsheet was the effect of cyclic loading on the component. Unfortunately, I've not yet carried out simulations on these, but it is on my to-do list. And hopefully by the end of the project, I will have more evidence. But considering the lifespan of a formula student upright here at UG Racing is usually two years maximum, consisting of two competitions and limited testing, it wasn't a major concern before sending off the upright for manufacture. So future work of my project, the uprights are in progress as you've already heard. Hopefully we'll be getting one dropped off and you'll be able to have a wee look to see what I am talking about. I'm hoping to carry out fatigue simulations using Fusion, Fusion 360 Autodesk software as it's a more simple setup when compared to Abacus. The first operation you can see on the screen here, that's the first CNC milling operation. The second step would be to flip the upright over and machine in from the back side before drilling the toe arm, steering arm mount and the bottom eight arm mount. So unfortunately this means there has been a delay in manufacture but I'm still hopeful to get the assembly process at least referenced in my report at the end. Thank you very much for listening and I'll take any questions. Thank you for having me.